So I'm going to start with Donna, um, with her, Donna does not have PTSD, but we're pretending like she does. So I'm going to tell Donna that I'm going to start with some neck releases. She's already given me permission to do that. So one of the first things I do, um, if you suspect the patient has had, um, uh, has been sexually abused, you want them to move their own hair, put their own hair back, um, because things like putting their hair behind their ear for them can be a little triggering. Um, but let's say that we have ascertained that I, I know there's no sexual trauma here, so I get to just go. Um, I get my hands right here, like at the upper around SI 11, 13. I go a little in and pull up to gallbladder 20 and just give a little traction. And I ask her to breathe deeply into her stomach while I'm doing that. Now, that alone will help the patient start breathing more deeply into their stomach. Did you feel that, Donna? Yes. So I get in there. I kind of i am patting up her spine like this and then pulling into the neck. And then I'm going to go across the base of the occiput to GB20. I might grab the sides of the head and give a little traction again. I might bring my, my fingers up around on the end, GB20 or UB10, Sanjiao 17 perhaps, just depending on where it seems to get. She's nice and loose now. And I can see she's breathing into her belly now, so I let that go. Um, some of these techniques, I learned these techniques various different places. Some of them I learned from Don Lee. I did his acupuncture orthopedics class, which I loved. Um, I'm going to go to the transverse processes of her cervical spine. And I'm just going to, she's a little jammed there. See, there's just not as much play. Can you see that? And what's your name? Brandon. Gwendolyn? Okay. See, she's, there's more play that side than this side. So I'm just going to kind of check that and then pull up at the occiput. So I know I'm going to need to free that side a little. She's a little jammed. Can you tell? See, this side, there's play. This side is like... Well, I'm going to release that side. I turn her face this way. I ask her, we want to max out that muscle group so it releases. So I'm going to have her push her face into my hand by turning into it, not lifting. So turn your face into my hand. And then I'm going to tap at the base of the skull. Uh, a lot of times patients will report it, feeling that all the way down the gallbladder channel. And release. And then I'm going to give her a little stretch from the base of the skull to the shoulder. How does that feel? While she's there, and I have her SCM exposed, I'm going to flick it. That helps release the SCM, and that's going to encourage deep breathing also. We tend to grip with the SCMs and the scalenes. Usually I just do it a couple of times. I'm then going to kind of do cross-trigger release across the top of the collarbone. How's that feel? Good. Yeah. Her voice already changed, so I know I'm on to something. And then I'm going <laughs> to... And then I always tell them not to help me. I'm going to bring her back. Now I'm going to check that again. See, now there's more. Now I have some play. See the difference? And then I have her do the other side. I always do both sides. Now turn your face into my palm. And release. That didn't release as much as I like, so I'm going to have her do it again. Push your face into my palm and release. Much better. And then I take my fingers kind of at the main points along the base of the occiput 
and stretch away from the tip of the shoulder. How does that feel, Donna? Good. <laughs> releasing tension. It feels, yeah, like release. Something I can't do on my own. And then I'm going to flick the SCMs. I'm going to cross trigger across the top of the collarbone. I'm going to ask her not to help me while I bring her back to center. How did that feel? Nice. Good. I'm going to check again. It's way more play. Now our head's moving where I want it. Still a little tight there, though. I'm sp doing this w much... I don't spend this much time on uh, an actual patient. I'm just rah, 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 get right down to business because I'm explaining it. It's taking a little longer. I see that she's just a teeny bit tipped this way. So I'm going to give her another release here. I'm going to get my three fingers here at like do 15, 16, and either UB10 or GB20, and I'm going to pull. How's that feel? Good. And then I'm going to release. Now she's more even. This is my favorite release in the entire world. Um, you're kind of working on the back door of the heart, so in the area of the heart and PCH um, shoe points on the UB channel. I'm going to slip my hand under her scapula near the spine. I'm going to draw it in towards the medial scapula and kind of hook my fingers underneath it. And then I'm going to kind of go like that. and whip it out. How did that feel? Good. It makes me feel like I got wider. Like whew. It feels like only the left side is on the table. Yes, exactly. So I'll do it to the other side. So I'm slipping my hand under and I'm asking, she's not helping which is great but sometimes they'll like pull up their shoulder. I don't want them to do that. Um, lower. It's just like it, the, it's the medial border of the scapula. Okay. I'll, I'll have her sit up in a second, okay. or at the end rather. Um, so I've got the whole medial border of the scapula. I've got my fingers hooked around it, mm -hmm. and then I'm kind of going like this to it, I'm trying to dig under there. And then I whip out. How'd that feel? All right. So now I've released the rhomboids and all of that.